Hey guys, DW Berman here with another video this time in Light Wave, and it's been a while since I posted a video, partly because I just got a new full time job and I just don't have as much time in front of Light Wave as I used to. So, um, the updates are going to be slower. So, what we have here, what we'll work on today is I'm going to show you how I, I do sparkles, and uh, we'll just try to make a nice little scene really quickly. I have not run through this in advance. Sorry, in the items tab, we're going to go to the dynamic, add dynamic objects, and we're going to add a particle system. And this time, we're just going to do HV emitter and hit OK. That brings up my emitter panel. I'm going to change my generator size to, say, uh, we'll say 50 meters by 1 meter. Uh, maybe that's too much. Say 25 meters. How's that look? 25 meters by 0.5 by 25. Here we have a nice big field. And if I hit play, you can see I have particles bumping up in this field, and then they disappear, and then other ones come up. That's not quite the effect we're going for, but it's actually not too far off. Let's change our birth rate here to generate. Uh, we'll say 50 per second, I mean 50 per frame, and then we'll change the particle limit to 100,000 just because, and you see we're adding them in there. They all have a lifespan, and you can see them popping on and dropping off again, and that lifespan is 60. And for now I'm going to leave that, and we'll just kind of leave it as it is. Oh, well, increase the length of my scene so we have more time with it. Let me move my camera back. Oops, I was running while I did that, so let's delete those keyframes. I'm going to delete these keyframes by clicking on this bar here and just kind of dragging across them, right-clicking on them, deleting them, and that got rid of all those extra keyframes I made while having auto key turned on and moving the camera while playing the timeline. So let's switch to my camera view. T for move, right mouse button to pedestal up. That is the TV term, pedestal up. I'm going to point it down a little bit. I'm just kind of winging it here. So let's just say that. Uh, we put a keyframe on 0, get rid of the keyframe on 266. So our camera is not moving at all. That's fine. Uh, if I render now, you won't see anything because these are there's nothing on those, they're just kind of reference points. So let's add something to them so they show up. This time I'm going to use hypervoxels, so let's go to... Uh, what do I want to do? Windows, hypervoxels. And click on the emitter and hit activate, and there we go. If I click show particles, you can see the representation of the particles. I don't want them that large. Let's try point 0.2 see what that looks like. Well, let's change it first to sprite mode. We just want to do sprite mode. Let me switch VPR on. Here you can see it. I'm seeing a texture in there I don't want, so let's just uh, turn that to none. And that's still much larger than I want, so let's make it a 20 millimeter particle size. That's pretty cool. Um, and since I'm just talking about the sparkle thing, I'm not going to add any interesting animation on how the particles move, but as you can see, the particles get born, they, they just kind of pop on, and then they pop off again. If you watch this one right here, you know, it's not there, then it's there again, right there, and then a few frames later, it drops off. So, all of these particles are lasting the exact same amount of time. Now, to get the sparkly effect, what I want to do is I want to turn on. I want to go to the shading. Now let's see, what happens when I turn luminosity up? Say, to 2000? Yeah, they definitely get brighter. So that'll be good. Let's... There are a couple ways I can do this. One way is to use the envelope here and go to modifiers and add a noisy channel. And we set it so that the scale is super high. This is a method that I normally don't use, 
but it's a perfectly good method, and I just haven't tried it because I figured out a different way. So I'm actually showing you a couple different methods, which is kind of what I tend to do in my demos. I show you multiple ways to do things. So by uh, I don't want to just the I want to adjust the offset. That's what I want. I want to move the offset up so that the the bottom parts are closer to zero. Of course, I could just move this down. So I'm actually adjusting the keyframe out so the normal base value is now 0% instead of the default 100%. So now it's jumping up and down. So now if I play this, you see the entire field is just kind of strobing. So that's not what we want, um, but that might work for some setups. Um, so let's uncheck that. I want to use texture. What I normally use is texture, and I go to gradient, and I basically use the parameters that I set there. Um, I can, yeah, I can raise this over a hundred percent, right? One thousand percent. Not, yeah. Okay. So normally, what I do is I just set the input parameter to relative particle age. Uh, if I set it to particle age, then all of the particles will uh, have the exact same timing on the the sparkle. So let's set a base value at 20, say that they're normally that brightness. And then uh, around here we'll put another keyframe. Then around here we'll put another keyframe. And on this last one we'll change this to 2000. And I'm going to change the smoothing type to linear. What this does is this keeps it a constant value from this upper key down to this next key. I'll do the same thing here. Step. So that way we just have like these sudden bursts of brightness. And there we're getting some effect. You can see right now if I set the, I mean, this is this is perfectly fine. So this is actually working really well. But one thing else we can do is we can go to the the emitter properties, and uh, under particle lifetime, we can change this to plus or minus. And in this case, I'll just do plus or minus 20. So this means the lifespan for each particle. Uh, the base will be 60, but it could be as many as 20%. 20 frames longer or 20 frames shorter for the lifetime. And this is, yeah, the basic setup where you just get these nice little sparkles all over the place. Um, if I go back to the generator and basically set the birth rate to 50, or sorry, particle limit to 50, you see it's generated 50 particles, and you notice that they're flashing at different times. I don't know how well the, the screen capture shows this, but they're flashing at different times because of their different lifespan. If I did not set this uh, lifespan plus or minus, then they will all flash in sync, and we don't want that. So there are basically two ways that we can control how often these things uh, spark. Uh, one is to have the particle limit, or one is to have the particle lifespan is short enough so that many particles are born in and, in and out throughout the whole process of the animation. Or we can just set the uh, lifespan plus or minus to another number so we get some more randomization that way. So that's basically how we set up a sparkle. And of course this will work with any any of these inputs in the Hypervoxels. Let me see. Hypervoxels. This will work for anything with these uh, the texture button on it. So you could have the color change randomly over, you know, the time. So, all right. Enough about that. That's how we set up. A, how I set up a quick little sparkle thing in Lightwave. So I hope you enjoy this little lesson and have a happy holiday, Merry Christmas, and uh, Happy New Year, and all the other stuff. And at Liberty3D.com, you can check out some of my paid tutorials, and as well as tutorials from a lot of other great people. And also, if you like this video, subscribe. And I 
will hopefully get videos out on a fairly frequent basis, although there's no guarantees because, as, as I said, my the amount of time that I have to do these videos is greatly reduced as of uh, a couple of weeks ago. And that's a good thing for me, so I, I've enjoyed making videos for you guys, and I hope to continue. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.